Jed Hoyer joins us right now on the Car X Tire and Auto Hotline. Jed, how you feeling today? I'm good. How you guys doing? We're doing well. Um, so the story is a legendary story, at least for Cubs fans, on, on how you and Theo went down to Florida to recruit Joe Madden. What was the story on you and Craig Council meeting? Where did you guys meet? Did you bring him wine? What was what was this meeting like? No, very different. Very different than buying uh, buying cheap wine at a supermarket for Joe. It was definitely uh, definitely different. But yeah, you know, we ended up uh, we talked uh, on the phone that morning of the first for a bit, and then um, you know, his process was pretty quick, and he was going to New York the next day. So. I ended up driving down from, from Milwaukee. We met at my house and talked for really a long time. It was, uh, I didn't know if it was going to be a you know short meeting or not, but, um, you know, he really pushed me and I really pushed him, I think. And, you know, certainly, you know, there was, uh, you know, the sense of urgency given the, the timeline, but I was, uh, you know, certainly aggressive in how I sold the opportunity and, and sort of what I, what I believe. And, and I think that the best thing about this job is that, Chicago is really easy to sell. Like the, the, you know, Cub fandom is easy to sell. Wrigley is easy to sell. I sort of needed to sell where we were as an organization and why I thought he was the right fit. And um, I guess I did that effectively. But that was, you know, once we sort of got through the kind of back and forth, once I felt like there was some comfort, I definitely sold hard on what we're building and, and what he can be a huge part of. Well, you saw councils contract sylvie there was no mo money for expensive wine left okay right, right. Uh, <laughs> it, it, how difficult jed of a decision was this for you to go in this direction knowing your relationship with your your previous ma uh, manager david ross it was really hard because you know rossi had been a really good partner with me uh we made some really hard decisions when he was manager um, obviously trading away that, that core group of guys was really hard. We lost a lot of games because of that. And he was always, you know, always a great partner with that. And I, I have so much respect for him. Ultimately, when, when, when this was a, a possibility, I felt like I had to go after it because I felt like, you know, this guy at the top of the game as a manager, you know, he, I uh, think he does an exceptional job. I felt like I watched him from afar. Just always get the most out of those teams he was exceptionally bright, and I thought he'd be just the perfect partner for what we're trying to create. So yeah, it was incredibly difficult, but I do feel like that's the job that I have. I have to make hard decisions. I have to do some things that um, may be unpopular at times in order to, to push things forward, and I thought this was one of those decisions. And, and, and I get all of that, and I, I, I love the move as a Cubs fan, but all that being said, him hitting – a home run in his last regular season at bat, him hitting a home run in the World Series for you guys, him going through the pandemic, all of that stuff as you're sitting with counsel in your home and him still holding that job, Jed, was there any part of you that just felt odd or weird? Yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, um, there was a real possibility that we, you know, we sort of that, that meeting happened and it sort of stays be between you know, between us and obviously, you know, I think Carter and Tom were the other two people that knew about it, but you know, that was a, a real possibility. Um, but I felt like it was something that I, I had to, to move forward and, and, and take that chance with that, you know, I didn't think it would, it would get out because that, that circle was so small, but certainly uh, I didn't know where that meeting was, was going to lead. Um, I'm thrilled with the result of it, but yeah, there's no question that was an unusual circumstance. And and so you just explained to us when you were on the last time about why it's important to you to tell guys like Bellinger at the trade deadline, hey, here's where we are uh, on your status, because you told us they're human beings. You know you're dealing with people, and that's what we've always admired about you. So knowing that as you're walking into David Ross's house to tell him the news, what is the emotion like for you um, knowing that you have to tell that to a friend and a, and a partner as you put that? I mean, I feel like any word I use um, in this setting feels like too small, if that makes any sense. Um, just because of the respect I have for him, because of what we've been through, and because you know, it's, it's such a such a difficult decision. Um, you know, that was it was it was 
brutal. And, and, and I, I can't, I guess I can't really articulate it in any way that I think does it, does it justice. It was incredibly hard um, to fly down there and, and have that conversation with someone that I, I care about deeply. It was, yeah, incredibly, incredibly hard is the only, way, the only thing I can say. Jed, at any point did you waver on the decision because of how you felt about David, or was this, you, you knew down deep this was the right decision and there was no, no second thought? Um, certainly, you know, from an emotional standpoint, yeah, that, it was, it, that, that part was incredibly hard. From a baseball standpoint, I felt strongly be, because of, of you know, how strongly I've, I've, I've felt for a long time watching, watching Craig. Um, so from the baseball standpoint, you know, that was something that I had my head around, but from certainly from an emotional standpoint and a human standpoint, yeah, there was, there was definitely, um, there was definitely moments where I just thought to myself, I thought about the conversation. I thought about, you know, David and it was, yeah, it was incredibly difficult. It, it, today, something that struck me when, when Craig council was speaking is he said that you and him have never really met each other, that, Maybe you've crossed paths on the baseball field and maybe said hi or nodded hi. I know at times it it was a very interesting rivalry. When you sat down with Craig or when you've gotten to know Craig over the last week, what's something about him that you never knew? Yeah, it, you know, we um, when he was a special assistant for Bob Melvin, not for, excuse me, for Doug Melvin, we, you know, we would chat a little bit at those meetings, and that was like in. 2013 or 14 and that's just like you know just pleasantries and really other than waving to him on the field i hadn't talked to him at all um i think the the biggest thing that's really struck me and it makes sense with why he's been such a successful manager is you know he's exceptionally bright but every single time we talk about a player or a staff member or a front office person it's very much about trying to understand the person um on a human level, trying to connect with them, trying to understand sort of what their why is, what motivates them. I, I can see with every player or every person, it's like, so how do I, like, how do I connect with this person and, and how do I understand what, what makes, what motivates them and what makes them tick? And he does it so naturally all the time, but I've really noticed that in every interaction and it makes sense. I mean, what is, you know, coaching ultimately it's obviously trying to get the most out of your team but it's not only strategic it's about each individual person you're trying to figure out what you need to do with that person to get the most out of them and i can i can i can sense that in every conversation jed what does this decision mean for the approach of the organization going forward does this mean it's go time that we are expecting to win now immediately or is that just too simplistic well i mean i i don't think this move, I mean, we, I don't think this move in, in and of itself is like, okay, now it's go time. I mean, certainly, I really want to continue the trajectory we started last year. Um, you know, I was really pleased. I was able to very much sell where we are. I think we have a really good core of players on the team. We have a really good farm system. You know, we have, uh, you know, available dollars to supplement that. Like, I really like where we are. I don't think it's necessarily a one-year thing. If If the right deals line up that we can – be aggressive and absolutely, you know, we'll do that. But more than anything, I just think that, you know, I'd like the, you know, the, the shape the organization is in the health the organization is in, I think we're moving in the right direction. And, you know, I feel like we have a manager that I know will push the right buttons and do the right things to get the most out of them. Were there times Jed, where you were frustrated that some of the younger players weren't in the lineup at the towards, you know, whatever part of the season consistently, or was that a conversation you had with Rossi pretty much before every game was played. You know, one of the hard things about last year and this, you know, I put this on, on all of us, and I certainly would not lay this at the feet of David Ross was that the way our season was, was super unusual that we were good in April. And then we spent probably like six weeks being horrible. And that put us 10 games under and put us in a, in a hole where, you know, we really had this almost sprint, from that day and whenever it was after the angel series, we got swept. We basically had to sprint from that day forward. And I do think that altered decision-making uh, altered player usage because we sort of, we couldn't have any, any lapses, right? We had a little bit of a lapse after London, but really for the most part, we were in a dead sprint winning almost every series in the second half. I do think that contributed to wearing down our bullpen. And again, that's, 
on me. We didn't have enough depth, but you know, we were winning all those games. I think that contributed and it made it harder to sort of, you know, probably, you know, put some different players in the lineup and do different things. Cause it felt like we were playing catch up the whole time. So I do think the way last year played out made those things difficult. And I don't think we did the best job as an organization of, you know, using those young players towards the end of the year. I don't think we did the best job of kind of using some different relievers in different places, but I think that's born of playing catch up the whole time. You know, if you're a college basketball team and you're coming back from down 25, it's really hard to do a lot of substitutions. You're, you're trying to score in every possession in order to come back. I think that's hard. And so I think a lot of things that happened at the end of last year were born of just the way the season played out in a very unusual way. Jed Hoyer joining us, Cubs president. It's Waddle and Sylvie on ESPN 1000. All right, let's get to the brass tacks here in the off season. Is Shohei Otani your number one target? <laughs> you guys know I'm not going to answer that question. You um, should have told it, it, it on it, differently. It's not the, he's not uh, tampering anymore. He's a free agent. You can talk about him. I know there's, there's no benefit in talking about any of those things, so I'm not going to do it. Um, now I appreciate you guys asking, and I know that uh, you guys will ask. And I, I, I'd say this: that you know that um, you know one of the things I enjoy about working in a market like this is we're going to be involved in, in in everything. You know, I think we'll be involved in you know a lot with a lot of good players. We'll certainly, you know, because of the Cubs and this ballpark and all these different things, we'll get in front of a lot of really good players and. You know, I think that as a result, you know, you're going to see rumors about us in on a lot of different things. And, you know, the challenge is always getting those deals to the finish line and closing deals is really hard. But we'll certainly be involved in a lot of things. And I do, um, you know, I do think that we have the structure of a really good team. Certainly we can find, you know, different places to add and get better. Um, and I think that's, that's going to be the goal is, like, how do we supplement the team we have to, to kind of make another step forward? Let me try it this way. Um, having gone <laughs> through this process before with this particular player and actually kind of building a bond and coming in second place, or so we're told, does the familiarity make a negotiation or a connection with this player, does it make it a little easier the second time around? Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, who knows if we came in second or if we tied with six other teams for second? Like, I guess we'll, we'll never know, right? But um, I'll say this, we we put our best foot forward last time. I thought, you know, so many people worked so hard on that presentation and spent, spent so many hours on it. And certainly I thought it, it went really well. And, um, you know, in a lot of ways we learned a lot about the player. We also learned a lot about presenting and, 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 and how we go about it. And so I think anytime you have to sell yourself, I think it's a good thing. You, you learn a lot about the right way to do it and, and, and what resonates and what doesn't. And um, I'm certainly, Glad we went through that process last time. Time I think we we definitely got better as or as an organization for doing it. Here's a general question on free agency. You mentioned money and resources. Do you have the money though to do to get anybody you would want? <laughs> I, certainly, um, you know I, I believe we have the resources to to go out and get better this off season, no doubt. Um, if I answer that question, everyone's just going to start doing the math, and so I'm not going to ever do that because it doesn't. It doesn't help me with agents to, to have them have a feel for exactly how much money we have. So I, I will say we have the money to, to to push this roster forward for sure. And then and then like in general terms on 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 Shohei and um, <laughs> with with his pitching though, help us figure this out. Like in in general terms, um, with him not being able to pitch next year, is that going to be very complicated? to try to figure out a deal like that because him as a hitter versus knowing if and when he could ever pitch again. Yeah, there's sort of no way to answer that without getting into medical information and all those different things. So I appreciate the 12 questions about him, but... <laughs> <laughs> can he pitch left-handed, yes. Jack? Do you know? Do you He's think tremendously he talented. Yes. Do you think there's a possibility? I'll tell you this. One of the most impressive things I've seen was... You Darvish used to throw a batting practice to his kid's lefty. Oh, my gosh. And I think he's up to, like, upper 80s left-handed. So Wow. Okay. Hopefully that... that'll get you guys off the show. Any questions. Okay. But, well, uh, here, here's another yeah, one. Anyway, super impressive. Okay. Here's <laughs> another one. Um, it gets really it gets really cold in the, in the Chicago winters, as you know. 
Um, and something that thrives in a good Chicago winter could be a polar bear. And do you think that this would be a good place for a polar bear to reside in the winter, spring, and then into the summer and fall? <laughs> yeah, well, listen, we will be, you know, like I said, there's a lot of good players that will be on the market this winter, both in trade and in free agency. And I'm sure we'll be checking in on all those, um, you know, because, like, you know, you never know. It's hard to it's really hard to do deals. It's hard to get free agents to sign, you know, cause you're competing with a lot of people. It's hard to complete trades cause you have to match up on value. And so, you know, we will certainly, you know, be casting a, a very wide net. Jed, uh, do you feel any pressure internally or externally inside the building to get this team back to the postseason? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing this if you didn't have that pressure. Right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm super excited about where we are, but it it really stung the end of the last year. I just felt like we, you know, we got to a place where it felt like, you know, all we had to do is play reasonable baseball for a few weeks and we would have made the playoffs. So it would have been a, I, I thought, a really great accomplishment to make the playoffs last year, given the expectations, but we fell short. And I mean, I think if that doesn't leave a bad taste in your mouth, I think there's something wrong with you. So, yeah, I mean, listen, I always say like, there's, I promise the pressure I put on myself is more than what any, anyone else does. And, you know, I, I really, um, I don't just want to get back to the playoffs. I want to get back to the, the point where it feels like, okay, you're going into the season and you know, that's that, that part is going to be taken care of. And it's just a matter of, you know, can you know, how many games can you win? And can you, you know, can you, you know, push the envelope there and get to a place where you really have a, a great chance. And I think the way baseball is, is, is going, I mean, you look at the last four national league teams, in full seasons have been, to, to go to the World Series have been the lowest seed. So, you know, so much of it is about, you know, being able to get in. The best thing you can do in this game is build a roster that year in, year out is going to make the playoffs. If you give yourself that shot every year, you, know, you hope to have a, a magical October one of those years. How do you feel about that? There's been like, as you know, boobs like us, well, we didn't really talk about it, but other talk show hosts who are equally boobs, um, we're, we're talking about the rules and saying, well, maybe now baseball isn't as fair to the number one and number two seeds because the, the lower seeds are playing and then you have to sit too long. Are, do you like the rules or is it unfair to teams that have won the marathon and then have to sit out for five games? Yeah, I'm also like the buy to me. I don't think there's really that much evidence that the buy affects teams. I just think in general, you know, baseball is a sport that has a lot of randomness and you'd have to play hundreds or thousands of games in a series to really have the best team determined. Now, some years, the best team wins. I mean, I think we were definitely the best team in 16 and we won, but it's actually rarer than you think that, you know, so oftentimes the best team doesn't actually win. I do believe that building a roster and a team for the, for the marathon, like that is the, the skill of this job, like being able to navigate six months and all the injuries and, and to do that, I think that is ultimately the biggest skill it's, it's changed, right? Like the, the way, the way baseball is, has changed. We used to have two teams that made the playoffs. There's just the pennant and you played a world series and then we had four and then we had eight, you know, and then we had 10 and then we had 12 and like, we keep, we keep adding more teams and I think what adding more teams has done is it underscored the randomness of our game in the, in the postseason, right? Like the Arizona Diamondbacks were a really good team at the end of the year. They they came together at the right time and they were really good. Um, but certainly over the long haul, they won 84 games because they had a lot of ups and downs. The Atlanta Braves were incredible last year, but they were pretty banged up when they when they got to the postseason and weren't quite as good. So I do think the more teams that get in by definition, the more randomness there is. And I do think that as a result, I think we have to, I don't think we have to think about baseball differently, but I think we should honor or focus on the teams that can win a hundred games or win, you know, a ton of games in a regular season. Cause that is, I think the most impressive thing. And then you have to hope that your team's in good shape going into the postseason. Has Craig given you a wish list of things he would like to see uh, before you get to uh, Arizona? <laughs> you know, we've had a lot of good player talks and, um, you know, certainly we will, we will have a lot of, a lot of discussions. I mean, I, you know, I think when we were talking, you know, we, 
at, at, the, at first we're sort of cars close to the vest because you're unsure, you know, how this is going to go. But then now, you know, now it's like, okay, here are the, here are our needs. And, you know, uh, we haven't gotten to this point quite yet, but I think we will soon. And just talking about like, okay, what things did you see from, from the other side that you, you know, that you liked or didn't like and, and things like that. But certainly we've talked about a lot of players and, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be in constant contact, you know, going forward. Jed, great stuff. Uh, we appreciate it. And, um, all the best here in this uh, hopefully hot stove. If we think about some other Shohei questions, yes. is it okay yes. if we text yeah, yeah, you? Yeah. Email, Can we email text you? Right back to you? Okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> thanks, John. Appreciate thanks, it. Guys. Okay. Yeah. There, there's Jed Hoyer.